this subject. I like very much when, uh, when I was invited as I thought uh, what to say about uh, what's new in universal motivation. And frankly, I think that uh, uh, the element, uh, the strange uh, interface, uh, is, uh, is what's really important uh, and, uh, and new. And so I will discuss uh, on what you can see. Uh, a baby that uh, is more baby of uh, yes, we are so I think uh, that is treated that was treated uh, non, uh, non invasively with a head and sip up and uh, this part uh, is uh, very nice because it is tolerable very tolerable uh, by 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 the patient Easy news uh, since uh, the end uh, of the 90s, uh, and it is very popular uh, in, in Italy. In, uh, after the year 2000, uh, uh, somebody, Professor Antonelli from Rome, uh, thought uh, had the idea to use the same interface uh, also for an so really for delivering positive pressure ventilation, uh, not just uh, not just you have, uh, I first heard about uh, this idea of my friend uh, Massimo. Uh, well, uh, I thought uh, I don't think it was a good idea because I thought uh, it was really impossible uh, to to use uh, such a huge. Uh, an enormous uh, that space uh, interposed uh, between uh, uh, the mechanical ventilator and the patient. And then I did just one thing, I tried it on myself uh, and I saw that uh, it could work. And so we started clinical use uh, and we started uh, some, some study on the end. Massimo Antonelli published uh, uh, the first series uh, on the helmet used for non-invasive ventilation in 2002 on critical care medicine. And uh, what uh, he found, he found in the series uh, that was confirmed uh, in several uh, studies uh, in the following years uh, is a much better tolerance. A much better tolerance is a great advantage because it allows more continuity in, in treatment. And the key point uh, is less Uh, in the series, uh, you can see that, uh, but you will know that very frequent, frequently non-invasive ventilation fails, uh, and in one third of the cases, uh, the cause of failure is intolerance of the patient uh, to, to, the, to the interface. So having a better interface uh, uh, for tolerance is, uh, is important. This is particularly important uh, if we want to use uh, non-invasive ventilation as an alternative uh, to invasive uh, uh, ventilation, as an alternative to the endotracheal uh, uh, tube. In this paper, you can, in the study, you can see that uh, uh, in hypercapnic, chronic hypercapnic patient and uh, uh, in acute uh, uh, hypoxemia, if you want to use uh, uh, the non-invasive ventilation is an alternative to intubation. We have to submit uh, the patient to uh, nearly continuously uh, to, to the mechanical ventilator. And this is obvious uh, because uh, uh, this is a crisis that may last uh, days, uh, one week, uh, ten days, uh, and as soon as we remove uh, uh, the assistance, uh, Nothing has changed, uh, and uh, immediately the patient uh, worsened. So it's very important that we may continue um, uh, the, the assistance. This is the typical effect of face mask uh, uh, ventilation when it's applied uh, uh, too long. Uh, uh, the upper part of the nose. 
because it's destroyed that the patient does not want to anymore and uh, he needs to, to be intubated. Uh, the the element uh, has uh, some mental uh, features uh, that are the strength uh, of this interface but also the weak part uh, of, uh, of uh, this interface. Large internal volume, it is big, it is usually well tolerated uh, even by claustrophobic because it is big, uh, it is transparent. Uh, uh, there is a soft collar that seals uh, the system uh, around uh, uh, the neck by adhesion due to the pressure, to the positive pressure. This is also very different from uh, from face mask, uh, non-invasive ventilation. The more, the higher is the pressure, the better is the is the seal. is contrary. There is a tendency to levitation, uh, a teaching inspiration, the helmet tends to rise and this reduces a lot the mechanical effectiveness. So typically the ventilator pushes first, the, the helmet rises and it's only after some delay that the positive pressure reaches the ventilatory system. So the Problems uh, of the helmet are circular breathing, uh, limited mechanical performance, uh, and uh, delays uh, and desynchronous. And I will discuss uh, these points, uh, uh, trying to, to show how these limits uh, uh, can be uh, or can be overcome. These are studies uh, on, uh, on CPAP. The helmet uh, CPAP is this well known that uh, um, so may build up uh, within the helmet unless we maintain uh, a high continuous flow within the helmet. So we have 10 liters per minute uh, equal to the patient ventilation. Uh, in spite of CO2 becomes uh, unacceptable. Uh, with 30 liters per, per minute is very good, uh, and uh, with more liters, uh, higher flow is, uh, is really good. Uh, the repeating of CO2 is independent uh, from the volume of, uh, of, the, of the helmet, because the helmet uh, uh, volume is bigger than one tidal volume. So we cannot correct this peak uh, of added uh, space. Uh, this is a uh, like in a very small uh, room, the CO2 level depends on uh, the ventilation uh, on the on the room, not the size really of uh, of the room. We have tried to reproduce the same uh, the same study on uh, uh, on non-invasive uh, ventilation, and here you see, we confirm that uh, in the helmet there is uh, a problem. Uh, and the inspirator CO2 uh, rises, uh, and it rises, the rise is proportional to the metabolic uh, production uh, of CO2. So it, it will be more difficult to manage CO2 uh, in the athletic patients with high fever, uh, with, severe, uh, with severe sepsis, uh, for, uh, for instance. Here you can see the curves uh, uh, between uh, uh, inspired for two percent and total ventilation uh, in the helmet. Uh, if total ventilation uh, is uh, is low, clearly uh, CO2 is not acceptable. But if it is between 25 and, uh, and 30, it becomes close to one percent, uh, and uh, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite uh, acceptable. But we may wonder how can we do to have. Uh, uh, 25 liters per minute during non-invasive ventilation. The CFAP is quite easy. It's enough to, to, to open the flow meter of the continuous flow uh, uh, that rinses uh, the, the head. But here we are connected to a mechanical ventilator. And the point is that uh, the volume uh, that uh, is delivered
prepared uh, by, by the ventilator is uh, the sum of uh, tidal volume that ventilates the helmet and the tidal volume that really ventilates uh, uh, the lungs. How it is partitioned uh, cannot be measured uh, easily uh, during, uh, during clinics, but for sure the percent that goes to the helmet that is, is really large and uh, you can really see during clinical application that the helmet uh, rises uh, during, during inspiration, accepting uh, a large volume. So the tidal volume delivered by the helmet is usually high and it must be high. The high tidal volume is the key point for having a good rinse of CO2 in the, in the helmet. We must see volumes around one liter and a half, and, uh, which makes uh, a mini ventilation, a total mini ventilation of around 25 liters, which is the, 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 the flow that, uh, that warrants uh, and that CO2 is limited during the uh, inspiration. That mean, this means also that pressure support, uh, the pressure support that we set in the ventilator must not be too low because it must be used not only to ventilate the lungs but also to ventilate the, the system. And of course, uh, we must never use a helmet connected to a ventilator for CPAP. If we want to use CPAP with a helmet, we must have a continuous flow because in CPAP, the mini ventilation provided by the ventilator will be more or less equal to the one delivered to the lungs. Delays and desynchronism. This has been shown very well by Paolo Navalesi. Uh, in Italy, this is a paper of assessment uh, in COPD patients. You can see this is the pressure wave uh, within, uh, within the helmet, uh, and this is the PDI, the trans transdiaphragmatic uh, uh, pressure. You can see that there is a fair delay between the start of the action of the diaphragm and the support provided by, by the ventilator. But nonetheless, there is uh, a time in which uh, the two engines uh, are superposed. Here you can see also another problem. The emptying of the system is low. This is, uh, this is airway pressure. And this low emptying due to the emptying of the, of the element may favor the synchronism with the ineffective efforts. Actually, we must say that ineffective effort uh, within a helmet is not really a correct uh, definition because the patient is free to breathe. It's a helmet. It's a, it's a, uh, there is a volume uh, uh, from which you can inhale in any phase and in which you can uh, 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 exhale. These are more correctly not assisted efforts, but are real pressure. How can be improved uh, on this? In the study made in France, it has been shown that uh, the helmet can reach uh, more or less the same performance uh, of, uh, of a face mask by particular settings, uh, which are using a very fast ramp, the maximum ramp, uh, allowed uh, by, uh, by the ventilator and this is obvious, the system is low and so the ventilator must be as fast as possible. PEEP must be increased in order to make everything a little bit more rigid and more fast to response. Pressure support must be uh, increased to compensate for what is lost within, uh, within the health. We also studied other important uh, um, aspects of improving, uh, uh, of improving uh, the performance uh, of, the, of the helmet. And one point is the inflation uh, of the internal uh, internal cushion. One brand uh, has an internal cushion that is, uh, uh, can be used uh, to support uh, the neck, uh, makes a 
everything more comfortable, but it's also useful for better seal and to reduce the helmet compliance to make it more stable and more rigid. PEEP, we tested a PEEP of 10, so if the patient had, had a PEEP lower than 10, it was brought to, to, to 10. And then we tried a different respiratory circuit. Uh, this is a circuit with a higher resistance, uh, a circuit with long tubes and filters uh, added as uh, mufflers uh, to reduce uh, the noise uh, of ventilation in the, in the helmet. Standard circuit, uh, we removed uh, the filters uh, and low resistance circuit, a, a circuit with short, uh, uh, with short tubes. And here you can see on a simulator the effects of uh, the cumulative effects of uh, um, these uh, different settings. The black line is uh, the standard, uh, uh, the standard setup uh, by inflating the the cushion, uh, the system becomes worn with uh, both during inflation and deflation. It improved, uh, it improves by increasing PIP and it improves by changing uh, uh, the circuit uh, with the short uh, tube cir circuit with no filters. And finally, you can see a very nice curve, much better, much faster, much more similar to what uh, we see usually during uh, mask uh, ventilation. This has been also confirmed uh, on a group uh, uh, of patients uh, and we have seen that using inflated cushion, PIP of 10, uh, of 10 and, uh, um, and short tubes, uh, and short tubes uh, uh, the desynchronism uh, uh, in practice uh, uh, disappears. You can see here the conventional uh, setup and here uh, much faster and uh, and much better. So I think the idea setup can be fast pressure ramp, a PEEP of at least eight, cash inflated, short limbs and no filters in the circuit. Otherwise, we can switch, we can try a new kind of helmet specially designed uh, for that. This is the conventional helmet uh, with the lower part uh, that is uh, soft. And uh, this is the next uh, helmet uh, with the rigid part uh, and uh, with the big cushion uh, around uh, uh, the neck. Standard, uh, standard setting, you can see very well here how there is this synchronism. Although there is no conflict uh, because the patient can breathe uh, from the helmet uh, and uh, exhale uh, in, in the helmet. While uh, the same patient with the next. Uh, helmet with the rigid basis is much better as synchronized. The problem is that this, this setup becomes more similar to a big face mask. So uh, some patients uh, do not tolerate so well this very big cushion that uh, uh, is in front of the, of, uh, of the trachea. So it is something that is, is in between the traditional and the second. In conclusion, uh, the helmet, uh, in my opinion, allows uh, to extend a lot uh, the indication uh, on the, of non-invasive ventilation to more severe patients, uh, to patients who need uh, continuity of assistance for, uh, <coughs> for long lasting treatment. Uh, the physical limits uh, of the system, which are evident, must be known. Uh, the ventilator must be set correctly, uh, and we must be know how to avoid uh, the problem of CO2. We, we must know how to uh, uh, obtain uh, the, to limit, uh, to reduce the mechanical limits uh, of, uh, of 
of the system. What is still lacking and uh, probably would improve uh, further the use of the helmet is a, a more specific design uh, for, for that. Thank you very much for your attention.